Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial on ADSR envelopes as used in FL Studio instruments such as Citrus and Harmer. ADSR envelopes seem straightforward enough, and I thought I understood them until I started looking at them in some detail. All is not quite as straightforward as it seems. So here's a rather unusual curve, ADS curve, which is controlling the volume. It starts off, the attack phase starts off at maximum, comes down to halfway by the time it gets to the decay, which is marked here. Then it increases again to the maximum, which takes us to the sustain level. And then when the note stops playing, we enter the release part of the note, the release part of the envelope. So here we are, we've got a note, a bass note, two bars long, and I've got a hi-hat on each beat just to count out the beats for us. So we start off at maximum, go to halfway, go to maximum, and then that's the end of the note. I can change this, I can make the release a little bit more dramatic. And I can maybe change the the curve here so that we've got the sustain level is actually held for a bit longer. Let's see if we can hear that distinction. And you can hear the sustains being held longer. So we can play around with this to our heart's content, change the relative sizes of the different parts of the envelope and so on. So that's all well and good. But what have we got down here? We've got these four control knobs, attack, decay, sustain, release. What do we need these for? Well, let's try playing around with them. If I bring the sustain down, there's a here it's halfway. Let's just bring it all the way down to zero. And I let go of the mouse. Look what happens. The curve just pops back up in, as it appeared in its previous position. Let's see what this sounds like. So it's actually playing according to the position of the knob, not what it looks like on the graph. Why, why should it do that? Let me just put this back, try playing with the attack. I'll bring the attack to zero. You see that it's, start, it's actually starting from... You see the attack's being cut out, it's actually starting from here. So it's just playing in accordance with the position of the knobs, not how it appears on the envelope. I'll just reset that. This is actually covered in the manual. If you go to the Citrus or Harmer, it tells us that the knob has an effect, although it's not reflected in the curve. And this is to avoid distortion and to make editing easier. Easier. And I don't see why it should cause distortion or make editing easier. Or why we even need them in the first place. Well, the only reason, I, the only thing I could think of was but it's useful for automation. Let me show you what I mean. But first of all, let's just set up our curve. All right. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is put in my playlist. I've got th six copies of the pattern. on and what I'm going to do now is right click the attack and choose create automation clip and let's see what what it's done here's our automation clip it's just a, a default horizontal line along the middle what I'm going to do is make it into stairs put that up there Put in another point. And 
and see if we can get some steps. quite what I want but I'll leave it for now so it starts off the attacks at zero and it goes up to 95% finally 100% so we should when we play this see the attack move in accordance with the automation curve <laughs> really hear too much of a difference but there's a subtle variation going on there and sometimes subtle variations can make all the difference to whether our patterns or loops sound monotonous or not you can experiment with all different envelopes this is just the volume but if you click here you can see there's a whole load of different parameters that can be automated So that's it really. Um, I think the purpose of these knobs here is to give us automation because if it was changing every time as these knobs changed during the automation clip then maybe that would lead to distortion and to a very complicated graph. So these knobs really just work in relation to the curve here. Anyway I hope that gives you something to play with and gives you some ideas you can use in your composition. Leave me a comment if you've got any other thoughts or ideas. In the meantime, thanks for watching.